which is titled Existence, Hypothesis, and Categories in Knowledge Representation. Okay, you have 15 minutes to present your work and five minutes for questions. We remind everyone in the audience to please mute your microphones while the presentation is ongoing. And Mr. Ricardo, you can begin. Um, oh, can you hear me? No. no. I think I think the other one. Hello? Hello? Okay. Okay, my name is uh, Ricardo Gooden, and uh, I'm going to present this work um, Existence, Hypothesis, and Categories in Knowledge Representation. This is a work that is uh, being developed together with Eduardo Camargo and Eduardo uh, Yuji Sakabi, which Eduardo is a postdoc that is working with me, and Eduardo Sakabi is a, a master student. Well, uh, the, the talk is about knowledge representation. And uh, we know that knowledge representation is one of the most critical issues. Oops. Uh, can you turn me back? Yeah, please. Okay. So, uh, knowledge representation is one of the most critical issues while developing a, a cognitive uh, architecture. Uh, depending on the cognitive architecture that we are uh, working with, uh, you have different means for representing knowledge, and depending on, on the means that you are using, uh, you are going to be able to represent parts of the reality that you cannot if you use a different uh, mean of representation. For example, uh, the solar cognitive architecture uses the working memory elements and rules, so we are in some sense tied to what can be represented by uh, working memory elements and rules. Uh, the Clarion cognitive architecture uses a different approach. They use dimension value pairs, rules, and neural networks. ACTR uh, uses chunks and rules. The LIDA cognitive architecture uses node networks and puppets. Other architectures can use things like propositions, predicates, atom spaces, beliefs, and any other kind of, of representation. And the problem is that uh, when we, we are tied to a particular uh, representation scheme, this limits us on the kinds of phenomena from environments that the architecture is able to cope with. So uh, in this sense, the architecture might be blind for some faces or features from the environment which does not fit into this representation scheme, okay? So uh, with that in mind, we are proposing here uh, one way of representing reality or representing uh, whatever we want to represent inside the cognitive architecture, that is uh, what we call an idea. Well, it's not exactly a, a new idea because the idea of idea is in everybody's uh, mind. But the idea or the computational idea is the building block for knowledge representation in CST. CST is our cognitive system toolkit, is a toolkit being developed by our research group for uh, creating cognitive architectures. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, whole idea of idea uh, can be both a theoretical and, and, and can be used in a theoretical and in a computational perspective. Uh, an idea can be used to represent since single properties up to very complex concepts like structures, trees, graphs, or, or, or networks. So the, the, the beauty of this thing is that uh, with this idea of a computational idea, I can represent virtually everything that I would like to, to, to represent, okay? Uh, one interesting particularity of our um, proposition for a computational idea is that uh, our ideas can refer to existence, and for existence, I am uh, talking about the states of affairs that are really happening as the environment, so I'm talking about whatever is here around us, okay? Uh, but our computational ideas can also be referred to hypothetical or imaginary things uh, that exist just in the realm of possibility. So they are not uh, things that are supposed to be happening around us, okay? And this is a, a quite important feature because this is not so common to have things like that in, in other kinds of, of uh, cognitive architectures. Uh, the computational ideas can also be used to represent concepts, classes, sets, or any other kinds of categories that could be important for us through to talking about 
our uh, our environment or our our uh, real world. Okay. Uh, this notion of idea has background on cognitive semiotics and particularly on the semiotics of sharps and dispersed. Well, um, this is a, a kind of a diagram that shows what we call the, the three worlds of ideas and the fragments of reality. So uh, I will uh, focus on each of these uh, uh, parts so because it's difficult to see them at, at, in, in this whole diagram. but. Let's talk first about the word of existence. So what you're talking about here, we are talking about what can be represented by an idea. And in this case, we are talking about the word of existence, things that are in our real world, okay? And then we fragment that in three different kinds of levels of description of this existence. In the lowest level of description, we have the, what we call the world of properties. So this is, for example, what you can have with sensors. I can have a, a, a camera and then I can have an image that will give us some uh, properties of color, for example. I can have uh, a sensor for sound and then I will have the, the property of, of the sound and, uh, over time. Okay? Um, I can have other kinds of sensors, for example, sensors for temperature, sensors for uh, pressure, or any other kinds of, uh, of uh, sensors. Then, on the next level, we have the world of things. So we are not talking about just properties, but these properties are embedded into things. Okay, and so uh, we are not talking about anymore about well, the temperature, a color, or uh, sound, but we are talking about objects, objects that are in the, at the existence. Okay? And so we have ideas that are being used to represent these objects. But objects are absolutely nothing if we don't consider time, because over time, these objects could vary their uh, uh, properties. Okay, And then we will we'll need to have uh, our ideas to represent episodes. Okay? And what is an episode? An episode is something that I have a, a list of objects or a list of things that are moving around time, in changing their properties around time. And then I will need to have a, a proper way of representing these uh, uh, episodes in time. Okay, And so you can see that with these three different words, we can have the three fragments of reality. And in this case, particular case, I am talking about the world of existence, things that really happened and uh, the, the architecture is referring to these things that really happened, okay? Then we have what we call uh, the world of hypothesis or the world of possibilities. In, in, in this case, uh, what we have, uh, we are not talking about something that really happens, but I'm talking about hypothetical things. I am talking about a hypothetical temperature, I can, I, I will be, I'll be talking about a hypothetical color, a hypothetical uh, uh, pressure, okay? And uh, so I will have the same three words, the word of properties, the word of things, and the word of episodes, but now being considered in this hypothetical thing. Uh, this could be, for example, uh, something that I am planning for the future, or maybe I'm just making uh, hypothesis considering possibilities of actions, or I'm just remembering something that is vague and I don't really can uh, precisely focus them on the existence. So it's a, a completely new world uh, that could be represented by these uh, ideas. Okay. And finally, I have uh, what I call the world of loss. So, um, or, or the, the world of categories. Okay. So uh, a category is represented by a law that includes something or not in, in this uh, category. Okay? And then again, I can have categories for properties, I can have categories for things, I can have categories for episodes. And so again, uh, we are going to see the same uh, sub-words of the fragments of reality happening in these uh, words of laws or the words of categories. Okay? Well, uh, then, how is the way that I, I can conceive these computational ideas inside a computer uh, uh, program? Okay, and, and this is the interesting 
uh, model that we have. Um, this computational idea is basically a, a conjunction of something that I call a value, and a value can be uh, a number or a symbol. Okay, in, a, in this very small uh, uh, representation, I will show later how we can expand that to, to, to be uh, more uh, complex. Okay, this idea must have a name, it must have a category name, and it can it must have a scope. And the scope is uh, exactly based on this. Uh, uh, if I'm talking about the the, the world of hypothesis, the world of existence, or the world of uh, categories or, or law, okay? Um, and then uh, the most important part of this model, uh, do I have a pointer here to, to show? Uh, not, not this thing, yes, but uh, oops, 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 oops. All right, I'm going to move to the conclusion so fast. <laughs> okay, no, no problem, I, I can, I can, um, but no, no problem. Uh, uh, just yeah, this is this is okay. Thank you. So, um, oops, I need to show it here. No, you can oh, show it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. So this is uh, the most important thing. This idea that refers to other ideas, because this is the key issue in this model. Because if I can refer other ideas to my idea, I can start creating complex ideas. And with that, well, with that, we can absolutely represent everything, okay? And I will give you some uh, examples for you to understand better. But um, these ideas can be of many different types. So uh, I can use this to represent properties. I can use this to represent things. I can use this to represent time steps, episodes, uh, quality dimensions, and, and affordances, okay? And I will jump to some examples, okay? Uh, we have created uh, this idea editor, which is a way of, of uh, visualizing these computational ideas in a more uh, uh, easily uh, uh, way, okay? So I, I, I have created these kinds of icons just to show the different uh, possible uh, things that could appear inside an idea. Okay, for example, I can have a property that is in the world of existence. I can have a property that is in the world of hypothesis. I can have a property that is in the world of categories. Also, I can have episodes of the three types, things of the three types. Okay, and based on that, we can create very interesting kinds of ideas. Okay, so uh, take this. Uh, example of an idea uh, of an episode. Okay, uh, I will go first with the uh, most um, left uh, idea. So I want to represent an episode, an oven heats. And in this case, I am talking about a real oven because I am representing it on the world of existence. So I am talking about a, a, an oven that I know. Okay. And uh, I know that in, in uh, instant zero, uh, this idea is represented by an oven, okay? That we have a token of an oven. Uh, you can see that this oven is green. This means that the oven is also in the world of existence. It's a real oven, an oven that I know, okay? And uh, it has a, a temperature that is 25 degrees. And there was a precise time when this happened because this is an episode that really happens. I'm talking about the existence, okay? And what happened is that in a, in a second time, in a time one, okay, the same oven now has a temperature of 200 degrees, okay? And so I am representing what here? I am representing an episode that happened in the real world, okay? We, we are uh, aware of that. Uh, there is a real oven that I know which oven is that, and I know the temperature that the, this oven had in the precise time, and I know the temperature that the same oven has in another time. So it's a complete description of this episode that this oven uh, hot heats, okay? Now, compare that to the second idea, which is more or less the same, but in, in a different, with, with some different qualities. 
First of all, in this, this second episode is a hypothetical episode. So I'm not talking now about a situation that really happened. I am talking about uh, a hypothetical oven. So it's not just an oven that I know. It's not the oven in my house. It's not the oven uh, in, in a restaurant. It's a hypothetical oven. Okay, so it's, it's, it's important because it's a difference between this oven and the oven on the first episode. Okay, in this guide, in this, in this uh, time, the time is unspecified. So I don't know when this happened. Okay, it could be even in the it could be the, the first one, but I don't know. Okay, it's a hypothetical uh, uh, time. Um, and then I know that in a second uh, instant of time that is also unspecified. I'm not specifying when this happened, but I am specifying that the temperature is higher than the temperature in the first uh, uh, time step. Okay, and so I can understand this as an episode that is a little bit vague, that is telling us that a possible oven in a possible instance of time has heated. Okay, so we need to uh, understand that there is a difference between the first representation and the second one. Because in the first representation, I was representing something that really existed. On the second, I am just considering a hypothetical situation where an oven has uh, heated, okay? And then there is the third kind of uh, episode, which is still a different one, because in this case, I am not talking about neither in a hypothetical sense and neither in an exist existential sense. I am talking about every possible situation where a possible oven, hypothetical oven, okay, not a precise oven, because you can see that uh, the, the oven there is blue, and blue means that I'm talking about in a, in a hypothetical sense, okay, uh, where there is a temperature that I'm not being precise about that, but it is, you can see that it's red, so it is uh, a temperature in the world of categories. So I'm talking about all the, the, the temperatures that are cold. Well, you know what is cold is, so you can precisely define what is cold, okay? The time is an ex existential one, so uh, I'm talking about the real time, but I'm not specifying it, okay? Uh, and then this same oven in the future, uh, we will have a temperature that is hot, okay? So you can imagine how many different representations I can do with that, just changing these little things, okay? I can change existence to, to, to hypothesis and then to, to category. And then, well, this same story can be told in many different ways. So it, it's a, a quite interesting uh, thing that we can do uh, with this thing, okay? Uh, I have another example that is a little bit more complicated, but uh, just for you to, to, to realize. So uh, in this case, I am, I am trying to represent a situation where John gives a gift to Mary. Okay, and again, we can talk about this uh, in the sense of existence, in, in the... Thank you, sir. And, hello? Uh, in, the, in the sense of existence or in the sense of hypothesis. And then again here, I can make, I can, oops. I'm having problems with uh, the battery of the microphone. Um, they are... Uh, trying to uh, find another one, but nevertheless, I will try uh, explaining. We can listen, but uh, no, no. Yeah, but people right. in the, in the <laughs> people, people in, in the remote, they, they cannot. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we, I'm not going into, into the, the details. Yeah, this is artificial life. <laughs> Technical problems are being solved. Just a little patient. Okay. The technical problem is being almost solved. Thank you. 
And uh, I'm not going to enter into the details, but uh, you can later uh, take a look on, on this uh, example in the paper and you can see that again, I will be playing with this uh, thing of, of parts of the, 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 the idea are uh, from the, the, the world of existence, parts of the idea are from the world of categories, parts of the ideas are on the world of uh, hypothesis. And with that, I can create a very different uh, situations uh, of, of descriptions of episodes, okay? And I also uh, hope you to see that in this case, what I have, I have an idea that is an episode and in, within this idea, I have another idea that is a time step. Within this time step, I can have an idea of, of thing. Within this idea of thing, I can have a property. And so we can use this, this uh, property of, of uh, a computational idea to refer to other ideas to create quite complex ideas. And with that, I can virtually represent everything I want, okay? Uh, also here again, I have uh, uh, the same thing, uh, applying uh, uh, an episode on the world of, of categories, an episode on the world of existence, an episode on the world of hypothesis. And with that, we can have many different possibilities. I'm not going to take too much time, but you can see these examples later on the paper, okay? So uh, to conclude, uh, it's very important to have uh, the consideration of scope, which is one of the main contributions of, of this, uh, uh, this presentation. So the scope can be in the world of hypothesis, the world of existence, or the world of categories. And this allows for many different kinds of knowledge to be represented. You can see that all these uh, representations are similar, but indeed they are different ideas and they are able to be represented by our version of computational ideas, okay? Uh, remembering that these uh, computational ideas are uh, the basic uh, knowledge representation scheme that is used in the cognitive system toolkit, which is the, the toolkit that we are developing in our research group. Uh, to represent them, we have these uh, issues of name, value, particular name, scope, and list of related ideas. This is a flexible and powerful means for conveying different facets of reality, and it is tailored to fit since simple numeric or string type ideas up to very complex data structures using a unique knowledge representation scheme. So the, the, the beauty of this is that we uh, just with a sense a uh, knowledge representation scheme, I can represent very different, very different kinds of, of, of facets of, of reality, okay? Up to our knowledge, CST is the only cognitive system addressing this issue of distinguishing among hypothetical episodes, things and properties versus episodes, things and properties that really occur in existence. And also the difference between instance ideas, those that are in the hypothetical in existence, existence versus categories ideas, uh, which is also an interesting contribution. As you can guess, this is a work in progress that brings many insightful considerations. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Now we will proceed with questions from the audience. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. You want to come here? Just to choose the microphone so people can. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I have just a question. How do you represent the, the change between ideas? I mean, you say a lapse of time change the features, mm -hmm. but that can change the idea too. Yeah. And how do you represent that in your system? The point is, when we are thinking about a change in ideas, these ide this change always materializes in time. There is no way in which we can we can think about a change that don't happens in time. So the only thing is that I just put two different uh, time steps, one time step, another time step, and then I can change whatever is on 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 in, in following this on on the tree. 
This could happen in a different way on the second tree, and then I, I will have a different scenario. This could be, for example, a change in category. Okay, uh, in, in the first step, uh, my, uh, my notion of a cold temperature is one. And then in the second time step, I enlarge this a little bit. So what was colder in the, in the, in the past, now it's a little bit different. I am considering a higher uh, subset of, of temperatures for, for being cold. Okay, so I can also represent the chains of ideas using this uh, same uh, kind of, of representation. Okay, thank you for your question. More questions? No? Okay, I have a question. Um, um, when you talk about the time, um, my, I am a little bit worried about uh, how much memory do you need uh, to um, represent that causality? Okay, because you have an, an object in one time and you have another, of the same object in different time, the object change, mm -hmm. the scene change, the context change. Now, uh, how you, in, in your implementation, uh, consider of that. Thank you for your question. I will uh, rely on this uh, example and here. Okay, um, I didn't have the chance to enter into too much details, but you can see this. There is one of the properties of the uh, time step that is transition. In this particular case, I am putting transition linear, which means that I am just picking samples on the evolution of time, okay? And then uh, I am moving from the temperature of 25 to the temperature of 200 in a linear way, okay? It could not be linear. It could be, for example, an exponential or, you know, you can just define any kind of profile. But the point is, I need to represent only the significant time steps. I don't need to represent all the time steps. Of course, that if you are talking about something that has a large development over time, this can consume a lot of memory. But using this and using this property of defining how is the transition, I can use some kind of regularity on the passage of time that I, I know that is for sure, and I can use that to, to minimize the quantity of memory that I need to, to, to represent in this case. Okay. Okay. This, uh, however, the, the, the problem exists. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and, and this means that uh, our brain ought to solve that problem in, in, in a way. I don't know who the way. Well, I, I, I believe that the, the, the the way is to find some kind of regularity. Because once that I, dis I, I, I discover a kind of regularity on, on, on how uh, this uh, transition happens over time, I can use this regularity and create some other part of, of uh, other idea that represents exactly how, how this evolves. Yeah. Okay? And I can insert that into, into the model. But, but, but is that uh, translated problem to to another problem because we need to find or imagine or know a function that uh, can model yeah, the, the transition. Yeah, the, yeah. This, the, if, we, if we go, for example, in, in the control system uh, in, in electrical engineering, we have exactly the same, this, this, the same problem. And uh, what people do is uh, to appeal to linearization, okay? Yeah. And so always we can use linearization to compact this, this transition. It's not going to be a completely precise description on, on, on how time evolves, but in most of the cases, linearization can be a very successful uh, use for, for, for having this uh, compression of, of knowledge into the smaller pieces. And so we can find a representation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. More questions? If there are more questions? No? No more questions? Yes? No? <laughs> so thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. And I think, thank you.
Okay.